This will be quick and to the point, so slow down the video if I'm going too fast. The left analog stick on my PS4 controller is faulty. In this game right now, I'm attempting to sprint forward, but instead it's pushing me backward and to the side. The action to sprint forward is done by pushing down and forward on the analog stick. I'm going to show you how to fix this issue by cleaning the inside of the analog stick. No soldering is required. This may also help resolve similar issues you are having with the analog stick. We need to go deep inside the controller. Lay the controller upside down on a soft surface. I don't recommend doing this around carpet as tiny pieces may fall off and become lost. Take out the four screws on the back with a small Phillips screwdriver. Gently separate the two shells. There's a ribbon cable between them, so don't pull them too far apart. My version of the controller has a little strip of plastic that goes between the shoulder buttons. Other versions do not. That strip is part of the back shell. You'll want to slip it out through the R2 and L2 buttons carefully. If the buttons get yanked off, just set them aside. You'll reattach them later. Other things may also fall off during the process today, like this tiny piece or these tiny springs. Set them aside if they do. Remove the ribbon cable. It comes right out of the socket if you pull this little blue tab. You may see marginal differences in the way the inside of the controller looks, depending on what version you have, so just keep that in mind. Remove the battery cable connector. It has two pieces of plastic stuck tightly together. Separate it by grabbing the top two sides and pulling upward. If your fingers aren't up to the task, go ahead and use a tool. Take the battery out. Snap out the battery plate. It's held onto the board by two plastic pegs. Disconnect this cable. For some versions, the cable can be disconnected by pulling it straight out. Others, like mine, have a little clamp that needs to be moved in the up position before removing the cable. This is a fragile cable, so be very careful. Remove the screw that holds the board in. Separate the front plate from everything else. For some versions, the ribbon cable will need to be fed out through the black plastic. The reset and share buttons may fall out. If so, set them aside. There should be a lot of dust inside, so blow off everything, especially the analog sticks. Pull off the analog sticks and blow off the area underneath. We'll be opening the two green chambers attached to the analog stick, the one that has the issue. These chambers have little metal legs that are attached to the circuit board. Take a very small flathead screwdriver and pry open the top of one of them, which in turn bends the legs. The tab is snapped into place by tiny parts and will unsnap as you pry it away. Remove the white disc inside. Set it aside and don't mess with it. It has tiny metal contacts on it, and you want to do your best not to bend those contacts. Dip a Q-tip in alcohol and clean where the disc was. Don't leave any fuzz behind. Let everything dry. Put the disc back into place. It has to go in a certain way. The side with the two close together dots needs to be at the bottom of the chamber. The best way to do it is to hang the disc on the little orange nose coming out of the analog stick. Your colors may differ from mine. Close the door and snap it back into place. It takes a good deal of force, but if it's taking too much force, open the door back up and reposition the disc. Make sure you don't have it flipped the wrong way. You'll feel a snap when the door shuts properly. Clean the other chamber of the same analog stick. Since you're in there, you might as well clean anything else you see that needs cleaning. Put the analog sticks back on. Put the share or options button back into position if they fell out. They have them shaped a certain way, so it's impossible to put them in the wrong way. 
place the board back into the shell. On some versions like mine, you'll have to feed the cable back up through the slot on the black plastic. Reattach the ribbon cable. Screw the board into place. Snap the battery plate back on. Some versions have this piece, which may have fallen out. It's a reset button, and it goes right here. Put it back in. Place the battery back into position and connect its cable. Make sure the cable is pushed all the way in. Connect the ribbon. The side with the silver wire traces needs to face the battery. If the L2 or R2 buttons fell off, snap them back into place. If the spring fell off too, that needs to be placed onto the rod that's coming out from the side of the button. And one leg of the spring needs to go in this tiny slot. There is a corresponding slot on the L1 and R1 buttons. The other leg will need to be in that slot as you snap it back on. It's very tricky and may take multiple attempts. You know you'll have succeeded when the L2 and R2 buttons spring back into position when you press them. Put the two halves back together. Everything should snap into place. Before putting the screws back in, test the controller. Be sure to test the shorter buttons too. If something still isn't working correctly, go back in and check everything. It's possible that the metal contacts on the disc may have been flattened during the process. It may help to pull them up a little bit. If all else fails, swap the disc with another one from another analog stick. Like from a controller you have laying around for parts. Please add any additional tips you have to the comments section. Thank you for watching.